good friend, Lisa Diggs, speaking of people that go out and do something, saw a need, saw an opportunity, and wanted to change that narrative, change that story, and created one of the most successful buy local campaigns nationwide. Lisa Diggs, Catalyst Company in Buy, Michigan, now. Thank you, Mr. B. How's it for you? All right, I love when you get an actual answer to that question. It's amazing how often you go out and talk to groups and nobody responds. So, as Terry mentioned, uh, and he's been one of the, the great supporters early on, I run a campaign called Buy Michigan Now. How many of you have heard of it? Oh, that makes me happy. It makes me happy that there's a lot of people who have. It makes me happy that there are some people who have not, because that means you get to learn about it today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. What it is, is, uh, as Terry said, it's a campaign to get people to buy from Michigan-based businesses, discover Michigan-made products, keep more of our money here to create more jobs. That's the fundamental thing that we do. So if you are not following Buy Michigan Now on Twitter, I encourage you to do so and, and come check out what we have going on. We have a pledge that we invite everybody to add their names to. If you have not done it yet, you can do it from your smartphone, you can do it from your uh, laptop, or you can do it on a piece of paper out in the lobby today and just add your name. The point of this is to help businesses know that we care where they're spending their dollars. Uh, we care that they keep it in the state of Michigan, we care that we keep it in the Detroit area, however local, local, local you can get, that's great, and then you expand beyond that. So if you believe in that, the one thing that I want to emphasize from this today is our pledge also includes speaking positively about the state. Hodge was talking about changing the narration a little bit and being storytellers, and we think that that's one of the most important parts of what we do with this campaign. So right from the beginning, we've been talking to students in schools, and we've been talking to people who have lost their homes and are thinking about going someplace else, or lost their job and thinking about going someplace else, and you start talking about what do we do to keep them here? What do we do to make that possible? What do we do to change the narrative about how people feel about this area? So I think we can all agree there are plenty of people telling the things that are not going well. It's not that those things aren't happening, but I think we agree there's enough of that out there, right? So one thing I hope everybody takes away from today is what can I do to be part of telling the story of what is working? There are great things happening. You're going to be hearing about them all day long today. So if you can commit to making a concerted effort to buying locally and to speaking positively about the state, I encourage you, if you haven't yet, to add your name to our pledge so we can help convince businesses that there are thousands of people that will favor them if they buy more local products. But what I want to really talk about today is an old saying that uh, I heard right coming out of college. I came out of college at a time when there might have been less jobs than there are now, which tells you how old I am. Um, but there may be others in the room that came out at about that time too, where you took free, you worked for free, you took unpaid internships, and you were happy to get a job that paid you like $14,000 a year and, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, at that time, a very popular book was, do what you love and the money will follow. Right, anybody hear that phrase? Anybody kind of laughing a little bit as they hear that phrase? Because you're like, yeah, sure, the money's just going to follow you, right? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Some of us are lucky enough to be doing things that we love and making a living doing it. If you're one of those people, raise your hand. Woohoo! It's great to see that there are so many people that fit that, and I hope that you are always able to do that. If you don't fit that yet, one of the messages I'd like you to think about today is don't worry about whether the money follows. Still keep doing what you love. Because doing what you love shouldn't have to be just how we make a living. It shouldn't be about a job. It should be about how we live our lives. Doing what you love should be how the majority of our time is spent. I was fortunate enough, I have family in Poland, and I was fortunate enough to go to Poland when they were under martial law. Um, I say fortunate enough to go because it was an unbelievable experience. But there was an old man that part, was part of my family. He's since deceased. He used to get taken by the Nazis during the day to work on their side, and the Russians would come and get them at night at 17 years old to build the bunker on the other side. He spent all of his time working the fields as a farmer and trying to keep his family with anything. When we went there, there was a discotheca. A discotheca, how cool is that? It was a barn, and it had a band, and there was a whole group of girls wearing the same dress. And I thought, it must be some kind of club or something. 
No, that was the dress available in the store that year. So if your money, family had any money, you got the dress. And if you didn't, then your family didn't have money that year. Because under martial law, that's kind of how things were there. And Lucian said to me, in Poland, we live to work. And in America, you work to live. We need to make that more true. So it's not necessarily about our jobs. It's about what we do with the time that we're given. So Detroit is an amazing place to do that because whatever it is you love, you can do here. Anybody know Emily Dorr? She started the youth hostel, right? She'd probably be surprised that I'm talking about her because I didn't tell her. But this is, I interviewed Emily when she was first getting it started. And she talked about the fact that she could, she was in her early 20s, she could go run off and hang out at the North Shore of Chicago and go have fun all the time. But instead, she loved being in Detroit because every day here, when you do something, it matters, it counts, because this is a city and an area that is hungry for your support, hungry for your talents, hungry for what you can do to help change the narrative, to help change how we live, to help change the quality of life, and to enjoy the life that you've been given. So I thought that was really cool, and I don't think you have to be in your 20s to appreciate that. Wherever you give your time and talent, it's a phenomenal thing to do, and I applaud you for doing it. If you can do it for Detroit right now, even more so, because if anything you want to do counts here, and that means doing things that you love. Don't volunteer in some way doing something you don't enjoy, and you wake up and go, oh, I said I'd go to that thing today. Jeez. Right? If you're going to give your time to something, make it something you love. Make it something you can be excited to be there. That means it can be almost anything. If it's that you love the field that you work in, phenomenal. You're already there. A lot of you raised your hands for that. That's great. That's a great starting point for doing what you love. Start a business in the city. If you can't start a business or you already have a business and you don't want to start a business in the city, then look for some of those younger entrepreneurs who are trying to do it and help them out. Give them some mentorship, give them some advice. The collaborative nature of entrepreneurship in Detroit right now is unbelievable. People are actually, even when they're competing with each other, they're helping each other. The Michigan Brewers Guild is one of the organizations that we work with in Michigan with the Buy Michigan Out campaign. And one of the things that the brewers have done that's amazing is they are creating a culture where we are a state that you come to to enjoy craft beer. And they don't care if you go to their brewery or the guy down the street, or the guy across the street, just come here and enjoy craft beer, and we will grow an industry around it. We have to take that approach about everything. So whatever you can do to support young entrepreneurs or people starting a business, do that. If you are an artist, create some art and donate it. If you appreciate art, there are so many facilities that could use your time or use your patronage. Go to the Detroit Artist Market, go to MoCat, go to the DIA, go to all these places that we have, and some of the lesser known ones, that you can find and spend time there. Now, if you like to garden, Greening of Detroit, great organization. Uh, there's a patch waiting for you somewhere in this urban environment that needs some tending and you can find it. If your love is enjoying food, how many in that category? All right, good, enjoyable, me too. Just enjoyed some at Maccabees earlier today. Anybody been yet? That's great, it's great, it's on one word, it's fairly new. So, but there's a bunch of restaurants. When was the last time you were to your favorite restaurants in Detroit? Or what are the ones you haven't heard of yet? Or what haven't you discovered yet? Or do you spend time in Eastern Market? If you love Eastern Market, bring somebody there who's never been. New flavors are introduced all the time. New products are launched all the time. Fresh food is available there. Bring somebody there and get them excited about it. Let them enjoy it. If you wanna build things, Talk to Habitat for Humanity and help somebody get in a new home. If you like to tear things down, talk to John George at Blightbusters. Or clean things up, join the mower gang. And they're cleaning up the, the parks. If you want to work with kids, Operation Kid Equip, Monocum, we'll talk about that. There's a lot of great organizations to do that. If you love to write, then write the things that you see that you love that are happening in this city. I'm fortunate. I like to help businesses grow. I'm getting to do that. I like to write. I'm doing that and I'm writing about this area. I like to talk to people about what they can do and I'm doing that in this area. Whatever it is that you love to do, it doesn't have to be how you make a living. It's just got to be something that you decide to do and this community is a great place to do it. Do you want to make films? You don't have to wait to get a job with Hollywood. Start documenting what's happening around you. You don't need expensive equipment. Everybody's got a phone now that can do it. It's just about your creativity. 
and how you tell the story. If you want to shoot pictures, document the city, send it out through social media, offer to take pictures for a family who couldn't afford a family portrait, go to a nonprofit and say, you've got an event, I'll take the pictures for you for your event because they can't afford a photographer. There's a million ways that you can use what you love to do to enjoy the city. So my final message for you today, I hope out of the time that you spend here, that you take away, is that I've got a role in what this city becomes. And I don't want to be passive anymore. Some of you have been very active, some of you may have been passive. Some of you are very active, but the people around you are passive, right? So think about what it is you love to do, what talents you have to offer, find a place for them and bring some friends along. And together, maybe if we do what we love, the money may or may not follow, but a magical transformed city will. And now I get to say what I've wanted to say as a comedian, I've never been one, but that's my time. Thank you to Detroit. <laughs>so love her passion so so love her passion what a great list of things that we can get out and do all right I talked earlier about numbers the number three represents creativity and we'll get to that in a minute but the number one represents leadership we are leaders in this town and have been for the last 313 years almost all kinds of different trades skills mechanics People still think about us as the worldwide leader of cars right now. We're transforming that narrative as we speak. But the one thing that is important for you all to know is you can lead from right where you are. Nobody has to tap you on the shoulder and give you permission. You don't need a title to lead. You can lead today.